everyone, welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel, guys. And it is safe to say that tonight at the Camp Nou, things did not exactly go to plan for us against Galatasaray. We thought coming into this game we were facing a team who were 12th in their domestic league in Turkey. We thought that maybe it might be a game that we could get through and get a good lead heading into the second leg. Because like I said before, we didn't want to give Galatasaray anything to protect or cling on to. Going back to Istanbul. Bowl, but at the cap now, we have failed to make a breakthrough. It's Barca nil, Galatasaray nil, and the star performer, by a long, long way, didn't come in the colours of Barca, but instead, the goalkeeper for Galatasaray, it was written in the stars, in Yaki Pena, was superb. All of the discussion from today's game coming right up, so let's... Get to it. Because indeed, Chami did make as promised a few changes in his starting lineup for this game. Obviously, Ter Stegen in goal and Destin Jordi Alba in the fullback areas. But Gerard Piquet there started the game from the bench with Eric Garcia replacing him in the lineup. It was De Jong who replaced Busquets in the deeper midfield position with Nico Gonzalez coming into the team alongside Pedri. And up front there, it was Memphis Depay playing more off to the left, Ferran down the middle, and a double. Arma Traore taking up a right wing position. And honestly, today, guys, when you're looking at that Barca performance, I just don't think we ever got going. I don't think we ever even got started in this game. I don't know whether it was a question here of A, just an off date. Was it just a bad Barca performance that we got to put behind us and move on? Was it a lack of sort of motivation? Did we take Galatasaray a bit too lightly? Was there that complacency that we spoke about before the game we didn't want to see? Or was it just the fact yeah, that in this lineup, and especially starting the game, there were some real issues I feel in that first half? Because when you're looking here a bit closer at that team and that performance, I think the first thing you've got to look at is De Jong. And this I said on social media is the biggest problem for me with De Jong replacing Busquets in a like for like role there. When he's playing this deep in the field, it's not the right role for him. As much as I can understand why we want to sort of find a replacement for Busquets, why you would look at De Jong to maybe take on that responsibility, but I just think when he's here, when he's so deep, because the fullbacks push on, he's then sort of level with our centre-backs in many ways, providing that third man, the play is all ahead of him, and you just don't see the best of Frankie De Jong. You don't see his best attributes there when he's getting box-to-box, -box, when he's exploiting spaces, when he's getting on the ball in advanced areas, when he He's this deep. None of that comes into play, and that's a big, big loss to our team. I also thought here in the front line, I think Ferran was struggling. I think receiving the ball all the time with his back to goal was not ideal. At times, I feel as they would have been more suited going out wide, but I thought Memphis, he really didn't add much today on that left-hand side, and I was actually very, very surprised that he stayed on the field as long as he did, because often he was giving the ball away, a bit loose in possession, not really a lot of movement either, and I just think that first star performance and the way the team was structured, it didn't really give us much to build from in this game. But of course, at halftime, Xavi did make a very, very prompt decision to not only change one, not two, but three changes at halftime. Dembele came on for Ferran Torres, Busquets came on for Nico, and Pique also coming on for Ronald Araujo at halftime. And of course, Barca, I think, did improve in the second half, was better than the first, but I wouldn't say by much. I wouldn't say there that we saw a drastic change to this team. Maybe we saw a little bit more urgency, but in terms of our own overall play. We didn't really cut Galatasaray. We didn't really put together any sweeping passing moves today. It was certainly not a vintage Xavi Barca performance that we've been used to seeing over these past few weeks. And the problem was that even when we did, when we did finally get in on goal, when we did create a bit of an opening, even in that first half there, the man that was there time and time again to shut the door was Iñaki Pena. In the first half there was a free kick there, went over the wall, Memphis got it up and down really nicely, but Iñaki Pena was there with a strong right arm to palm the ball all the way. Also in that first half, Memphis trying to curl one in from a tight angle there, quite a way out from goal. But again, Iñaki Pena was there with a left hand this time to push it round the post. And I think one of the more underrated saves actually came from Busquets' header. It was an actual back header from Busquets there. He was going away from goal. It was quite a sneaky header that looked to be just creeping in. But again, Iñaki Pena was there to just tip the ball over the bar. And as we said before the game, if this really was an audition at the camp now, if this was something here where he was trying to prove himself, well, today, 
way, he certainly did grab the headlines. Everybody was aware of what he was doing. Very, very well played. And it just didn't quite happen. You know, on 61 minutes as well, Memphis then was substituted with Aubameyang coming on. And quite clearly, Chavi was trying to rest players in this game, but he had to end up bringing them on. We did have a front three of Dembele, Aubameyang, Adama Traore. I think Adama did as much as he could. I think at times, you know, he was beating one man, beating another. He was always getting to the byline. But again, it was that ball into the box and we couldn't seem to either get on the end of it. The accuracy sometimes wasn't there and it just never really clicked for Barca today. There was a volley from Jordi Alba that he didn't really connect with perfectly, but he very nearly found its way into the back of the net. But again, even when De Jong had one on the edge of the box, a shot towards goal when he was a bit more advanced, finally, in that second half, Iñaki Peña was there to deny him again. And I think the big moment for sure was when Adama Troy was out on that right-hand side. Really good close control. Fantastic dribble there. He makes his way into the area, crosses it in, and then there's a bit of a goal mouth scramble. The referee later on, when there was a foul in the build-up. But in the end, it falls to Frank de Jong. So close in on goal. Again, you think it's going to be a goal, just like against Elche, when you think, OK, this is it. But it cannons off the post. And like I say, I don't know whether that goal would have counted. But it just didn't happen. It simply did not happen. And I was very, very relieved when 13 minutes to go, Bafatimbi Gomez came off the bench for Galatasaray. He scored. He put one past Ter Stegen to give Galatasaray the lead. But it was offside in the build. And we were very, very lucky that we've left this game here. Galatasaray threatened on a few occasions. But we just weren't good enough. I think that's the bottom line here today, guys. You know, we may have come against a team in Galatasaray who were struggling, who were not really feeling confident or informed Certainly this year, they'd be nowhere near good enough. But tonight, they raised their game and Barca did not. We certainly regressed today in our quality on the ball, in our intensity as well. We weren't pressing, we weren't sustaining attacks in the same way that we've seen so far under Xavi. And I think my big question coming away from this game now is going to be looking to that second leg, going now to Istanbul next Thursday... What's going to happen in that game? Because now it's nil-nil. We've got no advantage going to that game. And don't forget, that second leg is three days before El Clasico. So in that game, are you going to play your strongest team? Are you going to go out there all guns blazing, really trying to do everything to get the win? Or again, are we going to see changes? Are we going to see a team that maybe is not Barca's best lineup because you're saving some for the Classico? That's going to be the big, big question ahead of that second leg. But right here and right now, it is Barca nil, Galatasaray nil, no goals and not much excitement for the 61,000 inside the camp now tonight. So please, guys, do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you make today of Barca's performance? What did you make of the decisions from Xavi in terms of the team selection and also in terms of the subs? Who stood out for you? Maybe not in Barca colours, maybe in Galatasaray colours. And what are you thinking now? Looking ahead to the weekend against Osasuna, then the second leg against Galatasaray, before, of course, next weekend, a week on Sunday, it's time to face Real Madrid. I will see you soon, of course, with plenty more videos to come, hopefully on some more exciting games. But do let me know how you are feeling. Thanks as always, guys, though, for still coming here and for tuning in. And as well, for your fantastic support. I will see you soon. But until next time, as always, Vishka El Barca. Uh -huh.